What's up everyone, NeeJP2 here, and in today's video, we're taking a look at Swablu now that it got buffed. Now, I did put out a YouTube short about this, because I didn't know if I'd be able to get around to making a full video on this, but that YouTube short, I realized, did not very well show how much damage Astonish actually does now, so I decided I was going to make a full video on it. So, Swablu did get the Astonish buff, which increased Astonish's damage by 80%, which means that... If it can hit for super effective, it hits for a lot more now. And the damage actually does add up compared to when it was not buffed. It did like nothing, even when it was super effective. So I am quite excited to see how it does. Anyways, that's about it. Let's hop into the battles. Alright, so hopping into the first battle, and we lead Ariados into Shadow Amoongus. So it looks like we have an opponent that's running some spice, or they're just low elo. They then proceed to switch out into a ghost and ground type, and I thought it was Golurk, but they're actually running Palosand. We can just bring in Swablu, and Swablu fully walls them. There is not a single move they can throw that can hit Swablu, that I know of. Now, look at the Astonish damage. That's the buff right there. Now, the opponent does make it to a Shadow Ball, but Shadow Ball will not take out Swablu, and Swablu is able to just farm him all the way down. Now, the opponent's going to come in with a Vigoroth, and this is not the best, but we do have a ton of energy, so Vigoroth should be able to do very well. Now you will notice this whole team is weak to rock, and since Vigoroth now does learn a rock slide, I do have to make sure to, I can get rid of it. Now the opponent goes for a body slam bait, which is annoying, but we can go for a lunge, and now we can tank a rock slide a lot better. The opponent is going to no shield though, and they get very low. Now even if they go for a rock slide here, which they don't, they go for a body slam, why did it say it was resisted? I don't know, man. But you can go for a lunge into the Shadow of Moongus after they bring it back in. They won't get a farm down, and we'll be able to, to get some nice damage or get their last shield. We get the last shield, and now we can just switch into Swablu. And Swablu makes it to the Aerial Ace, but loses CMP. Now I decide to shield because I'm showcasing Swablu. I want to see how much damage this Aerial Ace does. And Aerial Ace does some impressive damage. The opponent is also forced to throw again because they will actually just... No, they will not be able to farm us down. We can bring in Pelipper, opponent brings in Vigoroth, and they can see the match. Hopping into the next battle, we lead Ariados into Azumarill. This is a pretty good matchup, even if we are running Trailblaze, because Trailblaze is non stab but Trailblaze still does some amazing damage, and we'll be able to boost our attack. And the opponent shields the first one, which is a definite misplay. You don't want to shield the first one, because the upcoming ones will be buffed. Now the opponent goes for an Ice Beam, and we make it to Trailblaze number two. This one will do more damage than the first, and the opponent actually double shields. I'm fine with that, I'm just happy to double shield as well, and when I get out of this, I'll have a 3 times buffed Aerados, and I over farm, the opponent switches into Ferrothorn, and Ferrothorn is not too good for my backline just because it's also a steel type, but since Aerados is double boosted, two lunges will take out the Ferrothorn. So Aerados is already able to take out one full Pokemon, and then they bring in Gligar, and we can switch into Swablu. Now, Swablu learns Ice Beam. I have no idea why, it's just a flying type, but it learns Ice Beam. The opponent can go for an Aerial Ace, and heck, they can go for another, but Swablu will live this, and we'll be able to see how much damage an Ice Beam does. So look at this. Swablu is 925 combat power, but Ice Beam does a ton of damage, and with the Astonish buff, we're almost able to farm him down. Now, we can bring in Pelipper. Pelipper should be able to just farm down the Gligar, and they can come in with the Azu, but there's just nothing they can do. We just can stay in, force him to throw a move, and since we banked a Trailblaze on Aerial, so we can just switch in, go for the Trailblaze, and Trailblaze will be able to take out the Azu, and we'll be able to take that game. Hopping into the next battle, and this is one matchup that is worse because we're not running Cross Poison, and that is the matchup into Jump Loft. Now, I'm going to probably switch into Swablu after this, and I do, and I actually do catch a move. Now, this is debuffed, and Swablu is surprisingly bulky, so Acrobatics doesn't even do half. They then switch into Frostless, and this is not ideal. I'll be able to make it to, I think, one or two Aerial Aces, and we do grab a shield for some reason. Now, Swablu does make it to a second Aerial Ace, and this Aerial Ace probably will not get shielded, and it obviously doesn't. We can bring in Pelipper, and Pelipper should at least tank one Avalanche. Now, they go for a Triple Axle, though, so now I'm probably going to have to shield. But Pelipper wins CMP. I was shocked by this. I did not know Pelipper won CMP. The opponent does shield it, there's just not an animation for it. it. Happens sometimes on CMP, I don't know why. But now we can try and go for a farm down, 
but the opponent switches into Lantern. Now, if they hadn't just not switched into Lantern, I probably would have lost, because Lantern would just fully wall my Pelipper. But since they switched out and switch locked their Lantern, I can just bring in Ariados, and Ariados will be able to trailblaze its way through this Lantern. Now, Ariados does make it to a trailblaze on CMP. This is why I like running slightly attack rated Pokemon, they win CMP, which is nice, because that can save that can save you sometimes. The opponent comes back in with the Frost Lass, but they're gonna have to throw. This sets Pelipper up to get some nice farm, because the opponent does not make it to another move here. They then switch into Jump Bluff, trying to like save the game somehow. We make it to a Hurricane. Hurricane will destroy the Jump Bluff, and Pelipper farms down the Frost Lass, and we take that game. Hopping into the next battle, we lead Ariados into Lapras, and Lapras is not the best for this team because it does do pretty well into Ariados, and it can destroy Swablu and Pelipper. Now we go for a Trailblaze, and we get a Shield. So once again, not ideal to Shield the first one, because it would not take them out. But now this one's a lot more threatening because it's boosted. Opponent double shields, and then they switch out into a Charizard, and I have to bring in Pelipper. Now the thing about this that I don't like is that I had to reset my two Trailblaze buffs, but the opponent can go for a Dragon Claw, and Pelipper should be able to overfarm slightly, and we're going to be able to go for a Weather Ball. Weather Ball will take out the Charizard from this range, and if the opponent comes back in with the Lapras, then we're going to no shield it here. The opponent goes for a Skull Bash, and Pelipper gets taken out, and Ariados can go for a Trailblaze. I was not expecting that Skull Bash, but they just went straight for it and it paid off. The opponent's going to actually fully farm down Ariados, and at this point, Swablu is going to need to get a farm down. The opponent has Rosalia in the back, and I was just thinking, what? I just had no idea what to think about this. But the opponent is probably going to end up losing because they were running Rosalia. Now they go for a move, Swablu obviously has a shield, but if I can get a farm down here, I can get two aerial aces, and Swablu barely farms down. Now we live the first water gun, which means that we will be able to make it to the second aerial ace, and aerial ace will take out the Lapras, and Swablu is able to clutch this game. I was very impressed by it in this matchup. Hopping into the next battle, and we lead Ariados into Toxicroak. This is not the best matchup, just because Toxicroak does wall Ariados, but can hit an Ariados for neutral. Now, Pelipper is brought in, and they switch into Drift Blim. Now, Pelipper loses CMP to Drift Blim, and I did not know that either, but we can go for Hurricane, either guaranteeing a shield or guaranteeing big damage, and the opponent just decides a shield. Now, I go for a Weather Ball just because I don't think I'm making it to another Hurricane before the throw, and I need to get some damage. Now, the opponent is going to go for a move. I'm just letting Pelipper go, and I'm going to bring in Swablu and hope to get a ton of farm on it. Now, you can see the Astonish buff right here, because before this, it would probably take like 10 Astonishes to farm down, but instead it's going to take like 6. The opponent then switches into Toxapex, and once again, this switch might have just lost from the game. You see, Aridos would not be able to get aligned against the Toxapex if they had just chosen to stay in. And so, we're going to be able to go for a Trailblaze. The opponent goes for a Sludge Wave, of all things. That's like, that's resisted. I don't know why. Sludge Wave is a better move, but not when it's resisted. The opponent shields the second Trailblaze, but I will be able to make it to another one on CMP. Now, this still won't take out the Toxapex, but it should get them low enough that Swablu can hopefully farm them down. Now, they're going to go for a move. They go for another Sludge Wave. Ariados barely lives it. At this point, I realize I have to switch into Swablu. The opponent makes it to a move. If this is a Sludge Wave, I just lose. But the opponent only made it to a Brine, and that still does some considerable damage. But they're actually going to get farmed down. They send in the Drift Limb, and they get farmed down. And now they can send back in the Toxicroak. But Swablu has back-to-back -back Aerial Aces, and the back-to-back -back Aerial Aces will take this game for us. So Swablu goes for the second Aerial Ace, and we take that game. Hopping into the next battle, and we lead Ariados into Sceptile. Once again, this is an amazing lead, so I wouldn't be surprised if the opponent switched out, but it looks like they're staying in. Now, I go for the extra here, I didn't want to throw on CMP, and the opponent goes for an Aerial Ace, which is not ideal, and they switch into Double. Now, Double is still not very good for my whole team, so I'm going to try and just get the back-to-back -back lunges off, and hopefully this will get them low enough that I can just bring in Pelipper, and Pelipper will be fine. I'm going to actually stay in. I want to bank a bit of energy just to make sure that I have some energy if I need it. And I am barely able to make it to another lunge. And I would have gotten taken out if I tried to switch out there, I think, because of the one turn. So I just have to go straight for the lunge. The opponent then brings back in the Sceptile, and I switch into Pelipper immediately. Now, Pelipper does live any one move here, and they can go for a Dragon Claw. So it looks like someone was not aware that this thing learned Breaking Swipe. But we can tank another one. They go for an Aerial Ace. Still not going to take out Pelipper and we're able to leave with a substantial amount of energy. 
Now they have Swampert in the back. And this is great because we can probably force both shields because they're not going to be able to farm us down. Now we get a we get a Weather Ball bait and they, they get a shield. We get a shield from them, sorry. And they can't farm us down still, so they have to throw a move. And now Swablu is just looking primed to sweep. Now I can bring in Swablu and the opponent, I'd, I'd love to see the reaction on their face, especially after I catch the Hydro Cannon. They go for the Hydro Cannon, Aerodos gets taken out by it. But now Swablu is just up two shields and up energy and up a slight amount of HP. So despite being a 925 combat power Pokemon, it's actually gonna still live this Hydro Cannon. I still don't need to shield because they're not farming me down. Now they, to add insult to injury, they throw an alignment, probably thinking they're gonna win CMP. But we can go for an Ice Beam and Ice Beam will take out the Swampert. And this was one of the best battles I ever had with Swablu. And we are able to take that game. Hopping into the next battle, we lead Aerodos into Victor Beal. And Victor Beal is gonna have to switch out and Aerodos is gonna have to go for a Trailblaze into this Lantern. Now I'm really glad they switched in the Lantern, and I'm even happier they shielded the first one, because now we're gonna be able to do more damage, and Lantern just destroys my back line. So since I'm shielding, I think they would think I'm weak in the back, so I'd expect them to shield again, but they don't. But the thing about that is that just puts them into lunge range. Now I still do have to shield here, and I'm not gonna go for a lunge here. I'm gonna go for a farm down, and does Aerodos get it? It barely does. Now the opponent brings in Nidal Queen, and I th I saw Poison Ground and thought Clodsire, but they're actually running Nidal Queen. Now they shield the lunge, and now I can go for a Trailblaze. Trailblaze will hit for neutral, and it'll hit for some nice damage. Now I can bring in Pelipper. Pelipper should be able to tank any move from the Nidal Queen, and so they're gonna actually go for a Stone Edge. Stone Edge barely doesn't take out Pelipper. I'm really glad I got that debuff because I probably would have just lost without it. And we get the take the take them out with the weather ball. They bring in the Victor Bell, and they're still gonna not be able to take us out with the move unless it's a Sludge Bomb. But they go for a Leaf Blade and Swabble lifts it. Now I make a slight misplay here. I go for the Ice Beam instead of, instead of the back to back aerial aces. Ice Beam doesn't take them out, but I got lucky because I was still able to farm them down. But if that had not gotten the farm down, we would have been in trouble. Hopping into the next battle, we lead Ariados in the Lantern, and. These are pretty good leads for Ariados. I was surprised by how many good leads I got for this thing. But we're going to be able to win CMP on the Trailblaze, and Trailblaze will probably get no shielded, and it does. Now we can just no shield their move as well, and hopefully I can just try and play out a zero shield. Now Ariados will outpace them to a lunge, and since lunge is boosted, lunge should hopefully just take him out. But we actually grab a shield, which is not the best. Now they're going to throw again, and I do shield here, so I'm hoping that I can just get the one shield, because I can go for a, a lunge, and lunge should just be able to take them out here. But if they shield, we can get some serious trouble. Thankfully, they don't, but then they bring in Obama Snow, and with that energy advantage, this is not good. Now, I bring in Swablu, and they're going straight for a Weather Ball. The thing about this is, Weather Ball doesn't KO Swablu, and then they switch into Medichim. Now, I go for an Aerialist, because I need chip damage on this Medi. And the Medi shields, and now I can switch into Pelipper. Now, Pelipper still doesn't have the best matchup, especially because I'm trying to farm down because they can go for an Ice Punch. Now, if, since Psychic was nerfed, they're not running it, but I do commit a shield here, and they're running Power Up Punch. So I was expecting like Ice Punch and Dynamic Punch, but unfortunately I get baited, and now I have to throw. And I have to get a farm down here. And I don't get the farm down, so I do think that the Obama Snow is gonna be able to just take us out. But the Obama Snow over farms, the, I'm assuming this is probably because they thought they need another Weather Ball to take out Swablu, but Swablu was way too low on energy, so they did make a misplay there, and they lost that game. Hopping into the next battle, and we lead Aerodos into Raichu. Now, Raichu is actually running Charm here, so Aerodos has a massively good matchup here. Now, we're going to be able to go for a Lunge. Lunge will grab a shield, because Raichu is fairly glassy, but they will make it to a move before we make it to the second Lunge. Now, they go for a Brick Break, and I had shielded that because I thought it was a Wild Charge, but then they switch into Wall Rain. Now, I do need to make sure that Pelipper can still take out the wall rain, so I go for a Trailblaze, do some nice damage, and Pelipper does win CMP. Now, the opponent is going to actually shield it, so it looks like they're making a play for Switch. The thing about that is, I don't care. They can just go for an Icicle Spear. They will outpace me to a second one, but I can just save a shield, and they're in perfect farm down range for Aridos. So, Aridos can come back in, and we're gonna actually try and throw the lunge. We got a one turn swap, so. They're actually able to go for an Icicle Spear, and that has to grab my shield. Now we get the farm down, and we leave with a nice amount of energy. 
Now the opponent's gonna bring in their own Aerados, and I'm gonna go for a lunge. Now I go for the lunge and switch into my own Swablu immediately. Now the opponent brings back in the Raichu, but since they're running Charm, and I'm running Astonish, I'm gonna be able to make it to an Ice Beam, and Ice Beam does some fair damage. Now they're not even gonna be able to make it to a move here, and Swablu leaves with an Aerial Ace. Now, I thought the opponent would have made it to a move there, but they actually apparently didn't. And Swablu with Aerial Ace is able to get them into a range where they can't farm Ariados, can't farm my Swablu down. And my Ariados has a move, so we're going to be able to go for a lunge here, and lunge will take out their Ariados, and we're able to take that game. Overall, Swablu with Astonish getting buffed that was actually insanely impressive. Now, the Astonish damage was actually crazy. Like, I was not expecting it to be able to farm down the palace in like that. I was expecting to have to commit a shield. But a, a Swablu was actually able to do a lot of damage with Astonish. So I was very impressed by that. It being able to farm down the Drifblim in two Astonishes after they switched it back in was also amazing. Because it meant they didn't make it to a move. So the Astonish buff was actually able to save quite a few battles for me. So I was happy about it. Anyways, that's about it for today's video. Thank you guys for watching, and I will see you guys in the next one.